Hey everybody, welcome to round three of this cube draft. Uh, we are up against Rin Tin Tin. Uh, this is not a great hand. We are on the draw here. Uh, we've got a lot of land, four land, but we have a five drop, a four drop removal, and a five drop planeswalker. Uh, we have no idea what we're up against. Um, we do want to be an aggressive deck. I think I'm going to keep this. Um, I personally would prefer uh, my one drops, my two drops, my three drops, not my five drops and my four drop. Um, but we'll get greedy, we'll get risky, and we'll keep it and see what happens. Uh, there's, of course, uh, uh, a very non-zero chance of us just flooding out here, but we'll see. A sword is okay. Uh, we'll lead with the caves, just in case we draw a Hand of Honor, in which case we can drop a Plains and be able to cast it. So we may be up against a blue uh, tempo deck or control deck here. Uh, so Looter Ill Core, it's a shadow creature, which we've seen in Tempest uh, last week. Uh, whenever it deals damage, he gets to loot. And being a shadow creature and there not being that many shadow creatures running around in this format. Uh, he's going to hit me, for sure. Uh, so we'll go... Uh, planes, step links, so we don't lose a life using the caves. And then just say go, I suppose. Not much else we can really do here. Next turn I can play a land, get in with my step links for two, and then not much. Uh, I could cast the sword. Uh, but that would make it vulnerable. Depends on what he plays, really. So he gets in, gets a damage, he gets to loot. Probably will throw away a land, depending on what's in his hand. Of course, if we see a good spell get thrown away, then maybe that means he is hurting for lands a bit. Well, he's thinking it over. He's got a full hand to decide from what he wants to discard. He goes with Baneslayer Angel. Three white, white, flying, first strike, lifelink, pro demons, and dragons. Pretty good card. Um, maybe that means he's missing white. He played another island. Um, it seems like a good bet. He passed the turn with five cards in hand, or yeah, five cards in hand, three mana up. He could have a counter spell, so I don't know if I want to drop my sword. Maybe I do. Maybe he just didn't play anything because he has too much white in his hand. It's risky, but I'm going to go for it. Yeah, he's got something. Three mana? Is it cancel? I don't think cancel's in the cube. Ah, dissipate. So it gets exiled. It ain't ever coming back. That's fine. That's fine. So he's going to get in for one and loot. Still looting. And he tosses Thirst for Knowledge. Draw three cards and then discard two unless you discard an artifact. He hasn't played a land yet. Uh, he's going to repeal my step links and draw a card. He must be hurting for land. It's not a great repeal. <laughs> there we go. He hits a Fairy Conclave. Uh, which is a man land. He can pay one and a blue to make it a 2-1 flying fairy uh, until end of turn. Um, so I could keep up Silence the Believers and then hit the fairy conclave. 
because I, I, I'm pretty certain he's hurting for land here. I think that might be what I do. Of course, he knows I have the step links. No, I think I'll just play out the step links here. Don't want to have him countering my silence to the believers. Of course, if he pays the two to attack with the fairy conclave, he'd, you know, wouldn't have anything really left to do mana wise. So this looter is getting kind of annoying. He's getting a lot of value out of it. I'm betting Obzadot would get countered pretty hard. Elspeth would as well. He's going to have five cards left in his hand. And I'm pretty certain none of them are lands. They could be white cards, though. We saw him get rid of a Baneslayer Angel, which is a double white. So he must be playing some number of planes. He tosses a Court Hussar. When it enters the battlefield, looks top three cards. Put one of them in your hand, the rest in the bottom of your library. When it enters the battlefield, sacrifice it, unless you used white to cast it. Uh, so he's going to drop my step links. It's uh, tapped at the start of every turn. Sure. And then we're going to see Jushi Apprentice come out. It's a 1-2. You can pay 2 and a blue and draw a card. And if you have 9 cards, you get to flip him. Uh, if you flip him, he's a 2-3. Two, 3 blue-blue. Three Target player draws X cards, where X is the number of cards in your hand. That's a lot of card draw. Of course, I don't really see him getting to nine cards at for the time being anyways. Uh, what's the strive cost? Black two? Yeah, I ain't going to have that for a while, unfortunately. Uh, Vindicate helps out a little bit. But he is tapped out, so maybe it's time for Obsidot. I think while he's tapped out, it's time for Obsidot to come down. Oops, oops, I need that to be white. So let's get Obsidot down. Ping him for two. I'm going to gain two. And then I will pass the turn. And I will exile Obsidot. So he's down to three cards in hand. He's tapping out for Future Sight. Play with the top card of your library revealed. All right, I'm pretty happy knowing what you have. Factor Fiction. I do not want to be making piles next turn. That's never any fun. Making me think. Oh, of course, and he draws that factor fiction. On top of his library is a card he ain't casting. Blue, blue, five. That's not coming out for a few turns. So what's he going to pitch? The nice thing is I know basically he's going to pitch Wrath of God. So he's really hurting for white. Um, the other upside here is that I know he has uh, a factor fiction and something in his hand that's Probably white would be my guess. So I'm going to ping him for two. I'm going to be able to get in for five. I actually have my choice of Soren or Elspeth now. So I'm going to swing in. So I'm one land away from being able to strive silence the believers. I think what I'll do actually is put Elspeth down. Make three soldiers. And then next turn I can put, as long as he doesn't get a counter spell, I can put Soren down and make them all two ones. 
uh, I will exile Obsidant. So what I really want is for his top card to not be a Plains. It's not. Old Man of the Sea. Gain control of target creature with power less than or equal to Old Man of the Sea's power. That's fine. Is he going to play it? He is. And there's an island, so he can play that island. And there's a negate. Uh-oh. So he would negate the heck out of my Soren, my Vindicate, or my Silence. So I ain't going to be playing any of those. Uh, is that hitting Elspeth? Yeah, that's hitting Elspeth. So he doesn't actually get to loot, does he? No, he doesn't. So I'm fine with that. So Elspeth is obviously going to be plus one here. Hmm, he's thinking about something. No, he's just going to take the two. Uh, Chainer's Edict. So I could Chainer's Edict to try to suss out that negate. And that would still leave up Soren mana. Might give him access to something better, but I think I'm pretty okay with that. So let's Chainer's Edict, see if he goes for it. Does he negate it, or does he sack uh, his looter or his old man? So I still have Soren, Vindicate, and Silence mana up. Soren would be my best bet because I could get an emblem. No, he's just gonna sack. He doesn't trust uh, me to have <laughs> not to have something else. I'm gonna plus one Elspeth, get a whole bunch of life. Then I guess I'm just going to swing in with Obsidot. Uh, I would have to swing in with all soldiers to get something through. Although he's probably going to block Obsidot. Otherwise he'd go to two. So if he blocks Obsidot, then I could send in two soldiers. One would get through, taking him to six. He'd go to four next turn. I have a soldier back to block. Yeah, let's do that. Well, this may not be best for him. I think he's going to pay the mana to uh, draw the card here, which is going to turn negate off. In which case, I'm going to jam Soren out. Ooh, there's a Plains. He's going to have white mana. All right, so down comes Soren for sure. And are we going to make a vampire? I think we are. So we'll pass the turn. We will exile Obsidot. So he has a negate, a factor fiction, a planes, a something and a something in his hand. Dungeon Geist isn't really a problem. Is he going to play it? He is. It's going to tap down. A vampire? I don't terribly care which he taps down, really. Ooh, Oblivion Ring. That's not good. And he has a planes. So one of my planeswalkers is going to go away. But then I can Vindicate, of course. Uh, because he won't have Negate mana left. And Obsidot is coming down again. It's important to remember that. So he's going to go to four. Oblivion Ring's coming down. I bet he'll hit Soren. Oh, 
Oh, he's going to hit Elspeth. Okay. Fine with that. So he's going to pass the turn. Obsidot's going to say hello. Taking him to four. I draw. So do I vindicate? Well, actually, let me just think here. I could just silence the believers, right? Black, black. One, two. Oh, I'm a man away from being able to strive and just kill them both. Hmm. So if I vindicate the Oblivion Ring, I'm going to get stuff back. A lot of stuff back. If I silence the believers, no, if I silence the believers, I can get in for four. Yeah, let's do that. So let's silence the believers, the dungeon geists. Unless he's holding force of will. Or I guess pact of negation, possibly. Nope. He just bites it, so I'm going to give all my creatures plus one, plus zero. He'll block Obsidot, and he'll have to take four. And that should be game, I think. So we swing in. So what does he have? He has a negate a factor fiction. Oh, of course, he can steal something with Old Man of the Sea. Totally forgot about that. So he's just going to block with my own... Oh! <laughs> well, I think that was a misplay on his part. He uh, did not block, as I think he should have. Well, all right, we'll take that win. Um, I think we had a pretty inevitable win anyways. He was really stuck on that mana. Uh, him being a control deck, I think Duress is an easy include. Uh, we'll take out uh, probably Vasara. Uh, anything else that we can think of? I didn't see anything too important. Maybe Manatithe, get into a uh, counter war. Now let's just put in Duress and see how it goes. Alright, he is playing first. Uh, we have Duress in our starting hand, and we have no black. We also have Carnifage in our starting hand, and we have no black. We cannot keep this hand. There's no playables, uh, so we're mulling that for sure. Uh, there we go. I'm okay with that. Uh, I will keep. So the big question is, is do I try to go aggressive with Carnifage, or do I Duress him and get something out of his hand? I think we get something out of his hand. So let's duress him and let's see what he's got. So he's thinking about it. Maybe he's thinking of casting something for a mana. Nope, I get to see it. So he's got a daze, which is one and a blue, and he can return an island instead of paying it to counter a spell unless I pay one extra. Uh, he's got a factor fiction. He only has one island. So uh, he kept a sketchy-ish hand here. Uh, repeal. Uh, is blue X. I'm just taking notes here so that I remember exactly what he has. Uh, fact or fiction is three and a blue. He's got an island, which is going to come down next turn. Old Man of the Sea. Not terribly concerned about that. Palincron, it ain't coming out anytime soon. Which is five blue, blue. Old Man of the Sea isn't necessarily coming out. 
So I think it's really between days or repeal, possibly fact or fiction. I think maybe we just take the days. Yeah, let's take the counter spell. So I know he has no counters, so that's good. So days is out. And then I can cross off the island because it came out and he passes the turn. So I can play both my step links and my carnophage actually. Um, he cannot counter it, he can repeal one of them, um, but that's okay. So let's go step links and carnophage. And then we'll see if he hit his third land or not. He's going to repeal here, I imagine, and he gets to draw a card. So he has five cards going on six, and I know what three of them are now. Ooh, doesn't look like he hit his land, unfortunately. Uh, Jushi Apprentice comes down. Sure, I'm fine with that. So if I'm lucky, I could think about sorting this turn. Um, near Heath Pilgrim. Choices, choices, choices. Um, so he has a Factor Fiction, Old Man of the Sea, a something, and two other things. I think maybe the sword is going to be the play this turn. Uh, well, he has no mana up. Because if I can get the sword onto that Carnophage, it's going to give him Pro Blue, which is pretty useful. And then I can start milling his deck, uh, and then he's on actually a 33 turn clock at that point. So he can't cast his Factor Fiction, or his Old Man of the Sea, or his Palincron, unless he hits a land. If he hits a land, he could bring out the Old Man of the Sea. I guess he didn't hit a land, because <laughs> he just gave up there. Uh, so yeah, that was uh, Wacky Wednesday, our first cube draft ever, my first cube draft ever. We went 2-1, and one. we got 16 phantom points, which is great, because 16 phantom points, I believe, is what you need to enter another cube. Uh, so that cube cost me 10 tickets, or $10, uh, but my prizes mean that I can join another cube at some point. So we are probably going to have another cube draft on this channel. It was pretty fun. Uh, I drafted an archetype that I don't know if it really was an archetype or not. I believe White Weenie is an archetype in this cube, uh, but I don't know if the black-white mid-rangey thing is that I tried to do. Uh, really fun format. I definitely really enjoyed that. Uh, you can definitely expect to see more of these here. Uh, if you enjoy these videos, definitely like them, subscribe to the channel. You can find me on Twitter at The Mana Leak. You can find me at Facebook at facebook.com slash The Mana Leak. Uh, like everything, follow everything, subscribe everything. Uh, if you have any comments or suggestions, always let me know in the comments or on Facebook or on Twitter. Uh, and I will see you all uh, next time.